Hi, this is Jim from RV4x40.com. We're glad you could join us today. We're here to try and show you some things we've done and some places we've been and maybe give you a few tips along the way for things that have worked out well for us and maybe things that haven't worked out so well. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about boondocking. Uh, we just finished up a week's long stay up in the mountains in Colorado and one of the things that comes up periodically is how do you find a place to boondock? Uh, what's the process you go through to make sure you can get into it and it's going to be something you're going to like when you get there. And that's what I want to talk about today. In our case, we're driving a 40 foot long motorhome when towing a Jeep behind it. So overall, we're about 65 feet long, something like that. And getting into some of these places can be a bit of a challenge. I've learned some things about how to do that. And I want to share those with you today. There's going to be three basic resources that I use, and we'll go through those in some level of detail. The first one is a website that I find very useful to find uh, free campsites. It's freecampsites.net. The second one is a review website, Campendium by name. I use them for boondocking as well as other campsites as well in campgrounds. I find them to be a very useful and uh, detailed review from people who have been there, and you get a lot of information out of that. And the last one, which is really a useful help, is Google Earth. With that, you can find out a lot of details, a lot of information, and have a reasonably good idea about what you're going to do before you get there. One word of caution is if you have not been there before yourself, take everything that you read with at least a small grain of salt. Some people don't understand what it's like to drive something this big, and it's a lot different bringing this rig in than it is taking in a four-wheel drive high clearance Jeep and you're going to camp. So we have some different requirements. When in doubt, stop and figure out what you can do next. Getting one of these things in can be very, very difficult if you're into a bad situation. For example, we really can't back up uh, with this rig. The tow bar system is just not set up to back a car up. It's not like a trailer. It's not that you have difficulty doing it. It's just that you're going to bend something fairly quickly if you're trying to back up in a lot of situations. So if we get stuck, the first thing I have to do is go disconnect the Jeep and then figure out how to get the RV out of there. Uh, the Jeep is easy. It's the RV that can be the challenge. So I encourage you to be very cautious about this and uh, spend your time. Once you've done it a few times, you may find you really like it. We mix boondocking as well as campsites. Uh, we can go out for probably 10 days if we wanted to push it that much. We usually go for about a week in boondock site. And then we'll find a campground for at least a few days to get laundry done and get showers every day and get everything taken care of. And then we can go back out again. That's our process. Uh, we enjoy the boondocking because it's a lot of solitude. It's a lot of things you can go see by yourself. Uh, there's not a lot of people around, at least close by. You have a lot of open spaces normally. And as you'll see from some of the uh, film here, that there were a lot of people in this particular site this weekend. We found this summer with uh, COVID and those things going on that a lot of people are out there camping and renting RVs or buying RVs have never done that before. And so the campgrounds are full, the boondocking sites are full. In fact, I was talking to a couple of rangers in that site and they said they had not seen a summer as busy and places that would normally only have a few campers the entire summer are busy all the time. So. Uh, it's just there. It's uh, available to be used. A lot of these sites are free. They're government owned and uh, available to you within the rules and regulations. So make sure you learn what those are and pay attention to those. Leave your campsite cleaner than it was when you came in and pack out everything that you took in so you're not leaving anything behind. Chances to take pictures like this are just one of the reasons we like to boondock. There are certainly other websites you can search to find free campsites and they 
have their own specialties. I like freecampsites.net because I have found it to be a very comprehensive site with a lot of information in a lot of different areas. And we're in Colorado, so we're going to go start off by searching on Colorado. And it will bring up a map like this with various dots and circles with uh, numbers in them. That tells you the number of campsites within that area. If you bring up like the blue site like that, it will give you more detail, break things down even further. And we know we're going to be somewhere around Salida. That's our goal anyway, uh, San Isabel National Forest or that, that general part of Colorado. We're out in the Rockies themselves. We're going to go look into that area. One of the things to think about is how far off the road you have to go. So we'll be coming up 285, and the first thing we find here is a Poncha Loop Road, uh, which is a, a campsite that's open. It's in Villa Grove, Colorado, according to the information here. So we're going to go into uh, freecampsites.net and look at the information about this. It will tell you it's a dirt road, uh, open weather permitted. There are one to five campsites, and the maximum length is actually unlimited. And in most of these places, you can stay two weeks before you have to move on. And a lot of times, there's a minimum distance you have to move if you move. Sometimes that's 25 miles. More information about the site can be found on here. And you can see from the map, it's right off the road. I want to do some looking next to find out the specifics about what this area is like. So we're going to copy the GPS coordinates. And then we're going to head over to Google Earth, paste those coordinates in, hit the Enter key. And through the magic of Google, we can fly right down into that area. And it will give you a reasonably good close-up. Satellite images, of course, are not live. They are recorded at various times when the cloud cover permitted. But the mark is right there for the GPS coordinates. You'll see some wide places around uh, in this grove of trees. And those would be campsites that someone else has previously used. And the rule is to use something someone else has used, not create a new campsite when you go into these primitive sites. One of the things I'm always concerned about is getting into it. It is a dirt road off of uh, 285. It's coming up there. There's a concern here because this is a two-lane road. It's probably a 55 to 65 mile an hour speed limit. And there is no left turn lane. Uh, so we're coming in from the right-hand side, which is south. And we would be stopping in traffic there without a way to get into it. So that is a concern right off the bat. Other than that, it looks like a nice little area. There's some trees. There's places to be back up in the trees. The road seems to be pretty good. Uh, it's open. There's not a lot of trees along the road to get caught up in. So it would be a definite site we would want to consider. And I'm going to rename this pin. So if I want to come back to it later on, I can do it by name instead of trying to remember GPS coordinates or finding those again convenient feature with Google Earth is you can mark your spots this way with pins and, and find them again uh, later on. We'll minimize that. And now we're going to go to Campendium. And uh, we'll look at that because I want to get some more information about this site. Again, Campendium is one of my favorite sites. It breaks things down into different categories as you can see on the website. And we're going to go into Colorado uh, because that's the state that we're in. And we're going to end up, uh, we could do a search here, but I'm also just going to kind of zoom in because I know about where I'm going to go. It's out in the area of uh, that part of Colorado, so we can zoom into it. And as we do, we'll see a pin pop up that's going to be right beside 285. We click on that, and that's Poncha Loop Dispersed Camping. And dispersed is a government word for boondocking. It just means you're spread out and there aren't necessarily specific uh, campsites. There certainly are not any services in there. You can scroll down through this and see a lot of information, including reviews. I am concerned about cell service pretty much all the time because we like to have cell phones and we also like to have data for email and other things that come up. So this one has uh, just a Verizon report there, so maybe that's the only service there is. There are some uh, information down here. One review is beautiful but rough. So you can scroll down through these and get the ratings of people who have been there. These are uh, verified from people who have been there. and uh, You can tell what's going on about the campsite a lot from these reviews and get you some useful information. I'm going to go back uh, over here. 
one of the things you'll see in these sites and uh, is a a link to other uh, campgrounds in the area and so I clicked on that and we'll see here we looked at the poncho loop that's where we were and we another one up here that looks interesting the uh, Northwest Poncho Springs BLM land but note in here it's saying the last half mile of road is is rough and you have to go slow so it doesn't say you can't make it but so let's go see what that's about and it's the Shivano Wildlife Area, uh, Northwest Poncho Springs BLM is Bureau of Land Management Land. And you can see the cell phone reports here are significantly better than they were down at the other site. We're kind of up on top of a good sized hill, so that helps. Now we'll just go in a different order. It doesn't make any difference. We'll go back to Campendium and we'll type in the name of the campsite we're looking at, Shivano Wildlife Area. Once it makes a match, it'll pop up and we just go click on that. Again, you'll see a lot of pictures, a lot of photographs people will post uh, in the area and you can see the cell phone coverage. It looks pretty good for all four carriers. And there's a comment there about someone going in in a 40-foot motorhome, so that tells me that they that tells me that someone else was able to get up that road. So we'll see how that goes. Let's go back to Google Earth now and see what we can find out there. Take the GPS coordinates, copy those again, and we'll head back over to Google Earth and replace our previous coordinates with the new ones. And so now that will zoom us around with a quick flight over the mountains and the valley and another pin into where the coordinates are for that campground. Go ahead and rename that while we're here so we know what it is in case we need to come back to it again on Google Earth. And you can see there's a lot more treed area up in here. There's a lot of roads back on off through this, through the trees. And uh, you can see the road wandering around there and the housing areas that are down at the foot of the hill. So it looks like it's a, a pretty good site as far as campgrounds are concerned and having a lot of wooded area. Uh, these are kind of scrub pines. Up, you're, up at, you're up at about 8,000 feet, a little higher. So these are not going to be real big trees, but they're the kind of pines that grow on the, on the Rocky Mountains. So let's go look at the interchange with uh, Route 50. And you can see there are turning lanes going both ways. So getting into this or off the highway would be a whole lot easier. And you can see that that road pretty much goes as a straight shot down through some, some farmland, some housing areas. And we get up into some other areas. And we were told that this turns into a dirt road at some point. It's a county road to start with. And you can see the relatively new blacktop in there. It's still dark. Uh, people are building houses up in here. And you can pretty well tell that at the end of the blacktop that this road turns into a dirt road. Uh, we're going to show you a little trick that I have found with Google Earth that makes uh, interesting video, if nothing else. It also gives you a lot of useful information about the road. And what will happen is these trees will have no depth because they're, they're, it's a satellite view. They really can't tell what's going on. But if you line the road up and keep zooming in, you'll eventually get down to a view like this, almost an earth view. Again, the trees don't have any depth, so don't take any information out of that. They're not that flat. But by using the arrow keys on your keyboard, uh, you can actually kind of fly up the road. And we're doing that. You can see a large size mountain uh, in the background. They darken the skies when they do this to so make things like that stand out. And from what we can see about this road, you can't tell any detail, of course, from a satellite view, but it does appear to be uh, reasonably flat, and it is certainly a dirt road. It doesn't appear to have any major ravines or anything like that or water crossings you have to go through, although I would expect in uh, wet weather, if it's raining, uh, there could be water running across the road. So really just fly up this for a little bit and see what it looks like as we go up and around take the bends with the arrow keys on the keyboard and we're up now almost to the top and kind of shortened that view for you 
And so this is where the pin is, or close to where the pin is. And uh, as I record this, we can exit the view and we'll go up into the air. We can scroll around a little bit. And there's our pin. So you can get a view for what it, uh, it's like uh, from Google Earth at that spite again. Just to give you a comparison, I took dash cam video and we're going to run that same route, uh, not in total real time, but it'll take a little bit of time to go up here to show you some of the interesting things that, that show up when you actually drive the road. So we're coming up Route 50 and making their turn onto the County Road 250. And you can see the farmland, you can see the mountains in the background. So we're in some pretty nice territory as far as that's concerned. The road was under construction and they had it narrowed down quite a bit between their barricades in the middle of the road and the porta potty on the right. Uh, I was kind of concerned I would get through there, but we did. Uh, we had a little bit of clearance and got through there just fine. And there's a people working on fixing a culvert or whatever, whatever they're doing there. And you can tell the road is a blacktop road. It's seen some wear. We're going to take off. There was a bridge that had a 20-ton weight limit, and we're 19 tons, so we got over that okay. Now we're up to the end of the road. There's that new blacktop I was talking about. And yes, the road definitely turns into a dirt road, and 17 miles per hour was too fast to hit that because it is totally washboard. So we slowed down really quickly to a crawl and went up the mountain, the rest of it. The trees are now real trees, and fortunately the uh, information was relatively accurate that they're, they're fairly far back. This is a narrow road, and you have two ways to do this when you meet someone like this. Uh, one car can stop, the other one can go is basically what happens. And since this is only one fairly, narrow, fairly short wide spot, he pulled off of the road. I went on by. Uh, sometimes if you have the wide spot, you want to let him maneuver because a smaller car can maneuver more easily. You want to do it that way. We're coming up into the edge of the territory right now. The BLM land start to show up. There's a fairly rough cattle guard going into this. We'll bounce a lot going through that. But you can see the mountains in the background still. And you can also see the people are already starting to camp. This wide spot just coming into the camping area. This was probably one of the roughest spots going up. And the reason is there's a creek bed uh, that runs in from the side on the right and then flows down the road. Of course, there's no water right now. It's, it's dry. But when it rains and it pours down through here, it tends to wash out this particular section of road. So it was uh, rocky. It was somewhat uneven. Uh, we had no trouble getting over it. It wasn't bad enough that we drug anything. But uh, we do bounce around a little bit going through this. And I would say that was up until we get right at the very top. It also had a washed out section. We had to kind of skirt around. But the road was not all that bad. Uh, we do. You can see the RV rocking as we go through that particular section. And there is more traffic coming our way, even though this is a boondocking site and it's out in the countryside. And so there's actually two cars coming down. Uh, we ended up uh, getting up there and because of that tree you see on the right sticking out into the road a fair amount, I did not want to get too close to that and scrape the side of the RV on the tree limbs. And so we just kept on coming and he got the idea and pulled out of our way. They both, in fact, pulled out of our way. And we waved as we went by, and they waved back. So everything was friendly, but it does take a little bit of time. And uh, you really have nothing much you can do except sit and wait for them to get out of your way with something as big as we are, unless we can get over to the side and they can go around us, which is the other option. So they're safely out of our way. We can safely skirt off to the left around the trees and no damage and just cost them a little bit of time and we appreciate their cooperation. Now we're up at the top, the same place we ended our flight in Google Earth and you can kind of see how the road is washed out a bit to the right there so we stay to the left uh, as best we can and make the turn and we're going to come up into the camping area. This is where our pin would be about a quarter mile down this road if you could actually see it in the ground. So there would be two camping spots uh, that we saw from the Google Earth, one on each side of the road right in, in this part of the camp area. And as we can see, there's one big rig is already up here, uh, kind of a toy hauler motorhome. They were there and across the road from where we ended up. And here was that other big site right in the front end. So it was empty. 
So we decided that we would stop in here, if nothing else, and maybe do some reconnoitering if we didn't like the site. But we're going to pull in here and park. It turns out this was our home for the next week, and we thoroughly enjoyed this. And you can get a feel for some of the, the views that we could see from up in here just by pulling in. I did fly the drone over this. I talked to both BLM and the Forest Service because they weren't clear between the two of them who, who had control of this particular piece of ground, but I did get clearance from both of them to uh, fly the drone. It uh, was not a problem as far as they were concerned. Uh, of course, national parks are completely without flying drones, and other areas may have restrictions, so you need to check uh, before you do this. But you can see some of the territory, see the sun blending off of the, the uh, the canopy on the front of the camera for the drone and uh, very very beautiful country up in here we're up at about 8,000 feet the green valley you see down there at the foot of the, the mountain over the other across the way somewhere around 7,200 feet and you can see there are roads that go through here there's wide open spaces you can walk in and hike in and that kind of thing uh, ride horseback if you want to that's fine up in here and you'll see people uh, it's relatively spread out. There's a lot of room between campsites, and you have a lot of territory to yourself. And uh, if there's multiple people coming in in a group, two or three of you, we saw situations where the camp areas were big enough to put more than one RV into it easily. So it's the beauty of these open spots that you have a lot of choices and a lot of places to park. And you may have neighbors across the way like we did, may have them somewhat close to you, but then there also is a lot of distance between most of the sites. I hope you found this uh, video useful and perhaps a bit entertaining, but also show you some of the things that you can do with the resources that are out there. Thanks for joining us today. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate that. And as we travel the highways, byways, and boondocking sites of America, we hope to see you. If we do, wave at us. If not, come back next week for another video and be safe out there.